What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Channel Chasers. Nothing fancy here. We're just going to, in the words of Philip DeFranco, jump right into it. Uh, of course, I am your host, Mr. J from Mr. J's Reviews. And of course, joining me as always is my number two, my friend, my co host, Brian Kersey. What's up, Brian? How you doing tonight? I'm all right. Hello, peoples. Yeah, so uh, first things first, uh, in case you guys were wondering, um, yeah, a lot of stuff happened IRL for me, so I, you know, I, I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't record, so we had to skip a couple weeks. Um, unfortunately, Curse didn't do that well, uh, that's kind of sad, but either way, we still had fun with the episode, um, but this time, we're talking about something a lot less niche. Um, something that's actually pretty popular and something that's near and dear to my heart. And, you know, Brian loves the first season as well. We are discussing season two of Gerard Way and Gabriel Baugh's classic comic book series, The Umbrella Academy, the Netflix adaptation. Uh, so, yeah, this is a great show. Um, I actually watched it uh with my little cousins uh, while they were in town for, you know, reasons. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, so it's a lot less fresh in my mind because I watched it pretty much right when it dropped and Brian watched it last week. So I'm going to kind of rely on you, Brian, for more reliable information uh, on how shit happened. Yeah, because um, um, true typical fashion, I finished it today. Yeah, so um, I guess before we jump into spoilers, since this is our technically first episode on the Umbrella Academy, at least for this version of the podcast, because we did, did, as per usual, we did do an episode on the prior season on the uh, original YouTube version, that which, which can no longer be found because YouTube said, fuck my original channel. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah. There it goes. Um, let's talk about it. So, uh, long story short, Umbrella Academy is about a team of seven adopted siblings, each with various powers, brought together by an eccentric billionaire named Reginald Hardgraves. And uh, they also had a manservant chimpanzee named Pogo, um, who was extremely intelligent. Um, and... Uh... The biggest thing that brings them all together is the fact that they were all born on the same day. Yeah, at the same day, at the same time, during this crazy event where basically um, a bunch of kids were immaculately conceived and seven of them were gifted with extraordinary powers. Yeah. Or at least seven that we know of. Well, seven that were adopted by Well, Hargraves. yeah, yeah, the seven that were adopted by Hargraves, yeah. Um, and these seven never really given actual names. They were given numbered identities because um, Hargraves kind of wanted them to strictly be superheroes and not really have much of a personal life because Hargraves is kind of a dick. Um, like, um, like on the search for comic book fans... On the surface, it seemed like he wanted to do X-Men, but really what he wanted to do was X-Force. Yep. A group uh, of highly trained kids with powers that could go in and save the day, but gave no fucks about them as people. Yep. So, just to kind of go through the lineup real quick, number one is Space Boy. A.K.A. Luther, uh, he his whole thing is super strength, and he also took this like uh, ape growth hormone serum thingy, which also it, gave him like mutated. But yeah, him this is spoilers for season one. Yeah, well, that doesn't matter because season one's been out for a year and a half yeah, now. And, so uh, he was he didn't take it; he was given it by his father. Yeah. Again. Yeah, and it was like, uh, you know, and he's like the basically he's the Scott Summers uh, equivalent. He's the loyal son. 
he stuck by Hargrave even after everybody said fuck you dad and bounced um he got mutated beast style via this uh serum well um, not and... just beast style because he is also like what eight foot tall yeah so uh yeah, and... I mean, I, I I say I say B style because he literally took a serum and got like super hairy and even bigger. Yeah, I get you. Um, but also, uh, got to be so. But the dad did not want to deal with him after doing this to him. So uh... because yeah, because he didn't want to deal with the resentment that would eventually build up. So he did what any good dad would do, and he sent him off to space on a fruitless mission that meant absolutely nothing. Dad to the moon. Yeah, dad of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Dad of the fucking year. Um, so, number two is our boy Diego, a.k.a. Knife Batman. Um, Diego actually had different powers in the comic books. I believe his powers were like, he could. He was basically kind of Aquaman-ish. He could breathe underwater and shit. Well, see, here's the thing, is... Um... Because I actually watched your review that went into the comics. Mm -hmm. Diego has the same basically, but he could also breathe underwater, which they never really went too much into detail. But yeah. apparently that, that was enough to earn him the nickname, the Kraken. Yeah, he, he had, yeah, he had, he had a cool, he had a cool alias, um, which... It's kind of funny considering that Ben could summon a legit like tenth yeah. creature, um, but yeah, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, Diego, he's the Edge Lord brother. Uh, he, you know, didn't get any attention from Dad for real. Um, he's the one that was probably the closest to his mom, um, and he was also like picked on a lot as a kid by the others. Not necessarily picked on, picked on, but like. He had a stutter, and so, you know, he, he felt like he was constantly being judged. Well, uh, also, uh, due to, I guess, partly that, he also uh, is, like, the most, uh, like, screw you guys type vocal yeah. ale. He, yeah, he's, like, so, like, how I said that Luther is the Scott, very much Diego is the Logan. Um, yep. Because he definitely has that attitude, and he is. Um, I I, th I think he is probably the most human out of all of them, with the mm. exception with the exception of one. Um. I because like I don't know he he I think has the most like. He fucks up the most, I feel like. And I feel like that makes him the most relatable. I mean, granted, there's one that, like, his whole shtick is fucking up. But, like, that's a little extreme. Um, I I get you, but, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's, so that's Diego. Um, number no, number three... three is I, I always forget the number order to be honest with you. Um, uh, Allison Hargrave. Okay, okay, three is Allison. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, I, it's like it's either three is Allison or uh, three. Uh, so yeah, three is Allison, aka Rumor, who has the most busted power <laughs> out of this entire group. Um, and ironically enough, it well, it's ironic when you know another member of the team. But it's the most like addictive power that you can abuse. Yep. So her power is kind of, um, at least what we've seen, low level reality manipulation. Um, yeah, but again, different from the comics because here it's just like massive. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. They, suggestion. It, it, yeah, because they, they play it like mind control in the comics, right? Or not in the comics, in the TV show. In the comics, she literally can speak shit into existence. Into the existence. And uh, it, thanks it to works. 
it works thanks like Scarlet this. Witch level type stuff. Yep, to the point where, uh, thanks to this review, I know this, uh, she accidentally creates another version of herself. Yep. Yeah, it, get, it gets real confusing. Um, but yeah, so essentially, Allison, she was kind of one of the first people to be like, now nah, fuck this shit, I'm out. Um, and she wanted to start a normal life. Uh, however, she was so adept at her powers, especially because she is obviously the Jean Grey of the team. Not just because mm. she's... No, she's the Jean Grey. In terms of... Not in terms of powers. In terms of, like, treatment. She's the Jean Grey. All right, true. I'll, are you I'll are you? I was, I was about to say, how is she not but the there Jean? is another person who power-wise oh, is yes. the Jean Oh, no. Str- straight up power-wise, the, that person is definitely the Jean Grey. But Jean Grey is the poster girl. She is the one who is always treated well. She's the, Everybody loves Jean. No well, one loves... Also, lo- <laughs> but to no be one, fair, in this version, everybody loves her because she made them love her. I mean, not her family, um, but yeah, you know, but yeah, they, that's also very true. So, cause with Allison, like she's, she's afraid that people won't actually like, her. she's never had experience with people outside of her family after she le- left. So in order to kind of hide that insecurity, she basically made people love her. And so she built a whole career out of that. Up, mm-hmm. to, the, up I mean, to the point where, like, she eventually uses it on her kid when she doesn't know how to, like, deal with her kid. And then her husband sees this, and he's like, wait, what the fuck did you just do? And she has to explain, and he's like, wait a minute, so does this mean our whole marriage was a lie? And it's just like, oh, well. Well, also to the fact where um, in her big focus episode in season one, they have a montage of some of her biggest ones. And it goes from the fact of that she's a very known actress. So she was like, I heard a rumor that I nailed it in the first try. To the fact where uh, the biggest one up until the daughter was, I heard a rumor that you love me. Yep. To her own husband. Yep. So, yeah. she She's probably the most fucked up character, like kind of just in power use, but I also kind of get it because, like, yes. that's a power but, that, like, I feel like everybody would kind of abuse the fuck out of. Um, but also to the fact where, uh, we can get more into this, but, uh, later, but for season two, she kind of has one of the biggest reality checks. Oh, and she gets a big redemption arc in season two, that, which I, I really appreciated, um, mm-hmm. because she doesn't get this until way later in the comics. Um, because uh, in the show, uh, uh, season one basically uh, kind of nerfed her at one point. Yeah. Um, um, and, uh, like, side note, I feel like we have to address this elephant in the room. Shit gets weird <laughs> with Allison and, uh, and Luther. You know, I said Scott and Jean for this particular reason as well. Yeah, uh, but... because, like, okay, I, I had this conversation with other Umbrella Academy fans and, you know, um, just people in general. Yeah, it's super fucking weird. Yes, they're not blood-related at all. Um, but, but, they were literally since birth, man. Who yeah. they both call Dad. They have the same last name. Doug. That's nasty. Yeah. Uh, to the fact where, uh, give the show credit, they actually address it. Yeah, it, but it's still, it's still but super gross. But then also, um, without spoiling, they kind of double down on it? Season yeah. 2? Yeah! <laughs> Again! Super gross. I'm not into this. Um, but but yeah, they can, they can do what they they can do what they want. Um, I, I still feel really uncomfortable about that particular relationship. Um, it definitely was not my uh, 
a favorite ship. Which... Listen, my favorite my favorite ship of season two had nothing to do with any of the other umbrellas shipped together. Okay, it has yeah. To do, it has, so we'll talk about that soon. Uh, but yeah, now let's talk about probably like my third favorite character in the Umbrella Academy, my man number four, Klaus. I, I love this guy. Uh, just because he he is a living train wreck and he is so much fun to watch and like the actor has that energy down so well uh it's just he's just so fucking entertaining man like you know without uh giving away too much uh there he does something in season two that makes perfect sense for his character because he's just insanely charismatic oh Um, oh yeah klaus Klaus is my favorite. He's my he's probably my third favorite. Um he's my he's my third favorite. Um well, I, will... I mean um I love Robert Sheehan, but he is not favorite he is not favorite actor, but he is favorite character uh, on the show. I mean yeah, I've always dude, Robert Sheehan was my favorite my favorite character on the Misfits. Uh so like I already knew I was going to love him. And, um, I mean, um, he was one of the best things about that kind of messed up Mortal Instruments movie. Yep. But, uh, yeah, so, but we'll, we'll get deeper into Klaus later. Uh, yeah, because Klaus, Klaus is really good, but Klaus is really spoilery. Also, Klaus... His power, his ability is that he can speak to the dead and communicate with the dead. Uh, where a lot of the more esoteric stuff for um, Umbrella Academy happens, uh, so much so to the point where they don't. Um, this was, uh, you know, to the it was kind of foreshadowed in season one, but never. Uh, I mean, not foreshadowed, but it was it was implied in season one. But in the comic, they directly show it. Uh, Klaus directly has a conversation with God at one point. Uh, Mm-hmm. And also, arc. and also in the comic books. Yeah, he has a conversation. Klaus and both of them because they don't want him. And Klaus also survived a gunshot to the head in the comics. Yep, and just healed from it. Yep, he so... was there like. Uh, Deus Ex Machina do whatever the plot. Pretty much, yeah. He was he was very much plot device man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, moving on. The Umbrella Academy, both in comic and um, in show. Although you would think so because of all the, the the fuck shit he's connected to. Number five. This is my dude. He is like favorite actor. He is like if Peter Capaldi was a child which is so which is so much which is so weird though because the, the actually Klux... I, I would say like a peter capaldi it's almost like a, a capaldi I, I would say capaldi tenant mix maybe with a little which, smith ex, ex, which is eccentricity weird. in there which is weird though because um the biggest thing that people say about uh Smith's doctor is the fact that he acts like an old man in a young man's body. Yep. And but five, but, but five really takes that. Like, I, I just love you. Want to talk about a like gives no fucks attitude? That is five, one thousand percent. Just how he reacts to everything so nonchalantly. Like, all right, let's go. The bad guys are all right. All right. So here's the deal. It's like, okay. I already know what you're going to do. Now, here's what I'm going to do, and you're going to fucking like it, okay? Because I'm number five, bitch. Um, and also, and... like, single-handedly, the best fight scenes yep. go to it's him. Always, yeah, it's always five. And, the, and they always have, like, it's always the best fight scenes with the best music, too. Um, yeah, to the fact where uh, we'll get more into this later, but in season two... He has one scene that reminds me of the church scene in Kingman. Yep. 
Um, it's it's pretty great. But yeah, five is phenomenal. Everywhere and his is, power is broken. His, Stupid. His broken. power will initially. His power is just teleportation. Yeah, it, yeah, it's just teleportation. And then you realize, oh, this dude, this dude decided, okay, teleportation is broken enough as it is. But let me just make it even more broken and figure out how to teleport through time. Which, uh, funnily enough, leads to a whole thing of where we say that he's old man in a young man's body. He's he is literally an old man in a young man's body because he did the math wrong. Um, yep, and traveled back in time. And is like the crux of season one and somewhat season two. Uh, and uh, is now perpetually, at least if you go by comics logic, stuck as a little kid. Yep. But, you know, he has, he has all, all the sensibilities and like the grudge and attitude of like a 40, 50 year old. And training... Well, I believe they said that he was like sixty. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, yeah, he. I wait, well, yeah, you're right. He's like in his sixties. You're right, because technically that, uh, like where where he is in the future is like fifty years. Yeah. But so, um, but yeah, uh, I think they said that he spent like forty something years by himself. Yeah. Yep. And he ended up being trained as a time assassin, essentially. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. uh, which is amazing uh up to the point where um you know one of uh, one of his biggest jobs of preserving the timeline as a time assassin ends up coming back to bite him in season two uh which we'll talk about later mm-hmm. so but uh, that that's cool but yeah and uh the whole time thing like really gets explored in season two yeah and it's so it's what I, what I love about this is, of course, time travel brings fuck shit, because time travel always brings fuck shit, but it's not super dense. Like, it's... If you've watched enough time travel stuff, it's actually not that hard to follow. Well, also, the show, basically, without saying those exact words, are like, yeah, it's fuck shit. I mean, it, yeah, it's pretty much, it, it's all fuck shit. Um, but it's, <laughs> they it's, even address it. And um, the time travel agency, even with a world full of, like, super-powered beings, including, like we said, a guy who's, like, almost eight foot tall, still the time agency is, like, where you get some of your most weird, unique, cool characters. Uh, one of which, in season one, was played by Mary Day Blige, and she was amazing. And I missed her. Yeah, she 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 was very missed. Um, and but yeah, uh, and uh, a fish. I will just say that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. AJ, AJ is great in um, season two. A yep, fish. AJ is AJ is great. Um, so real quick, uh, let's go over the, let's go over the last two. So number six is the horror, the horror, aka Ben, um, who was unfortunately. Murdered during a uh, like attempted bank robbery stopping. Um, well, we don't know. I'm, I'm, in the show, well, in the well, show, they, they never, they've never talked about it. It's one of the biggest mysteries. Well, I mean, okay. Well, at least in this, like, they kind of they heavily imply it's the bank. It was the bank robbery that did it because, like, well, no, because um, at they showed the bank robbery in season one, and uh, he's there with the rest of them. Yeah, and then he gets shot. No. Because, uh, he did not die there. Really? I thought he died there. Huh. No. No, he didn't. That's still one of the biggest mysteries. Oh, okay. Um, Never mind then. My bad. Cool. Uh, yeah, so, um, I actually don't think they ever, re- wait, no, they do reveal how, ah, uh, now I remember. Okay, not gonna I don't it. think they did in the comments. No, no, either. no. I'm talking about. No, I'm. I'm, think, I'm thinking about because they, they've released. They've released a lot of Ben. What they've released a lot of Ben like one shots. Oh, okay. There, there's a lot of side material because so there's like the main series, and then they have they've had like different one shots focusing on um, like the Umbrella Academy kids 
uh, during the time period during the separation. And there's like there are there's a couple with um with Klaus and Ben just fucking around, um and I I believe they talked about it. It's been a long time since I've read uh like read the stuff because I used to I used to collect this shit religiously. But, um, but yeah, without spoiling too much, uh, season two, we don't really get the answer, but we get a clue, and uh, we'll get into that. Yeah, and later. um, it's 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 really interesting because um Ben. Uh, obviously, uh, the only reason Ben is still around is because Klaus um, has the power to speak to the dead. Um, and Ben and Klaus mm-hmm. were already super close to begin with. Um, so, uh, like, when Klaus is sober, Ben is visible. So, Ben's whole goal, he's actually kind of, like, Klaus's unofficial AA sponsor. <laughs> kind of. Because he's like, look, man. I need you to look out for everybody else because I'm not here. Get your shit together. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So and that's... even and yet again, we have a case where uh, we've talked about this multiple times on this show, where uh, post death we still get to see the character, and the character is awesome. Yeah, and uh, Ben. Ben has a huge impact all throughout because, you know, everybody loved Ben. Like, Ben Ben was kind of the heart of the team. It's kind of like, you know how in, like, Justice League Unlimited, there was, like, um, you know, when Wally died, like, that's what caused the whole Justice Lord situation. Um, Ben's death was the impetus of the split for the group because he was the heart yep. of the team. Yep. And so, you know, him being around it was kind of cool. Um, especially because he was very close, and the only, really the only one that was nice to, number seven, Vanya. So yep. Vanya is the one Brian alluded to, who power wise is just straight up Jean, Jean Grey mixed with Black Canary, um, because Vanya's powers are um, high level psychics. But essentially, her powers work by converting sound waves into psychic energy. Yep. Um, and so, um, very much like the classic Professor Xavier situation, uh, Hardgrave sees this immense, uncontrollable potential in Vanya, so much so to the point where um, he doesn't do what Xavier does and just suppresses the power using his, um, you know, using other means. He does that. But he also does the most fucked up thing possible by making Vanya think she has no powers and making everybody else think Vanya has no powers. So Vanya is growing up her entire life in a family full of people who are extraordinary and she's the ordinary one. Yeah, and, uh, basically, basically, if you guys remember X-Men Last Stand, the crappy X-Men movie... It was kind of like that, but more so. Yep. And also, like, uh, what's my call it? Um, she she did the she did this thing where she um, uh, if you ever watched Haunting of the Hill House, you know how like, um, the homeboy Steve, uh, like he wrote this book about their traumatic experiences and like it caused like kind of tension and a rift between the family because it's like, hey, you shouldn't be talking about that shit without, like, telling us, man. No, I don't, we don't want the world to know about this. Vanya did that. Um, she wrote a, she essentially wrote a tell-all. Yep, um, and it was something like the the non-powered one or something like that. Yep, yeah, the, the non-extraordinary Yeah, the unextraordinary one, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that um, was it. The unextraordinary one. Because, you know, the Umbrella Academy were a pretty well-known team in the in this universe. And, you know, so she wrote a tell-all. Um, but uh, to the universe, they were known as the Six. Yep. Because Hargraves... Didn't like even include said, Vanya, yeah. Because yeah, she was way too fucking powerful. Um, and essentially, like... We're going to skip over a fuck ton because we don't, we're not just going to do a whole episode on season one because we want to get to season two. But to skip over a fuck ton, um, Vanya discovers her powers 
goes full Dark Phoenix and causes the apocalypse and basically nukes the timeline. Um, to to be honest, she does it on accident. Yeah, but but uh, she goes full on Dragon Ball Z abridged and destroys the freaking moon. Yep, and also uh, she like Allison. Um, I I will give. I, if, if I'm going to give anybody credit, I'm going to give Allison credit because this was the beginning of her redemption arc, really. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, she realized the, her dad did, and she's like, oh man, I should have stood up for you. I should have been there. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And, you know, when she starts, you know, when Vanya starts flipping out, like, all Allison wants to do is, like, genuinely talk to her. But, but because but... Vanya, but, but because Vanya's in such a, like, a, a panicked, angry state, she thinks that Allison's about to use her powers. Well, um, she was. That's well, yeah. that's that's the mistake. Yep. That's the mistake that Allison made because uh, she's trying to talk her down and it's not working. So Allison says, "I heard a rumor that," and then well, Vanya goes and just like slices her throat open, and it's just like, "Holy shit!" Mm-hmm. And yeah, from there, basically shit goes crazy town banana pants. And it co- it comes down to the fact that like five is like, all right, fuck this shit. Grab my hand. We're jumping to another timeline. Well, because uh, uh, after she destroys the the moon, a uh, piece a rock comes a chunk of the moon comes down on the earth and it's going to cause the apocalypse, the thing that Five has been trying to prevent for all of season one. Yep. And uh, we end it with them jumping, not knowing what's going to happen next. Yep. So now we go on to season two. So this is where our spoiler section begins. (laughs) So each member kind of Everybody gets distributed all throughout the 60s. Um, and uh, Brian, I'm going to need you to tell the specific years because, again, it's been two weeks for me. Um, well, uh, what happens is uh, uh, we see each individual person. Um, I know Luther came back uh, 1960. He was the first. Five was the last. He came back in 63. Mm-hmm. And uh, in between, uh, a lot of them came back. I know uh, Diego had been there for less than a year. Uh, yep. And then Klaus, I I be- Klaus, I believe, came back in 61. I know yeah, Klaus Allison and ben. Came, yep. Yep. And I believe Allison came back in sixty one, but at a different month, so completely missed him. And uh Vanya Vanya came back I think in sixty two, but got hit by a car, so Yeah, so she lost all her memory conveniently. Um Well there's more to it, but we'll get into it, maybe. Yep. Yep. So yeah. Um essentially But we as all... the audience we follow we follow five as uh he initially doesn't come back on like any normal day. He comes back on a day that uh lives in infamy in the sixties. Um Yeah, it's uh, the... a, a, a particular parade in Dallas. Uh, well, no, no, he doesn't come back then. Oh, really? Okay. No, he comes back to post then, where uh, he, the Soviets are in. Oh, are they, in, oh yeah, oh yeah, they go full red dawn, right, right. N- yeah, they're in uh, New Mexico, and then he looks over to the side, and he sees like basically all of his siblings. 
oh, using yeah. their powers, and, and, yeah, wrecking like, shit. Yeah, it's like the big battle scene. Yeah, yeah, and they're all teaming up, doing these combo moves and shit. Yeah, that was pretty fucking to, epic. To fight off the Soviets, and then, and then he gets met by a familiar face. Hazel. Yep. But Hazel, who looks like Colonel Sanders because he's lived a long, healthy life back in time. And he got 20 good years with Donut Girl, so that's good. Yeah. And uh, he he gives five... Ten days? Eight. Yeah. Wait, no. Somewhere around there. Yeah, it was eight days. He gives him eight days and says... The apocalypse is going to end eight in eight days. You need to go save it. And he's like, he sees like his family going up against the Russian army. And he's like, what about my family? And Hazel just points it up and says, look, and it's a nuke. And he's like, yep. the whole world is going to end in a nuclear explosion. You need to go stop this now. Yep. <laughs> Pushes him through a time thing. So, and uh, this is where Five gets reacquainted with the head of the uh, the time agency. Um, and also we get kind of, like, we know that she has some kind of alternate, like, ulterior motive, as always. And, well, uh, uh, he doesn't meet her initially. Oh, right, right. He's just trying to save, he's trying to save the world, because he sees, he sees a guy taking his photo and has some equipment. So he's like, what the hell's going on with you? And so he goes to investigate the world ending. Meanwhile, we see the handler who apparently had been shot dead by Hazel. But she had a plate in her head which saved her life. Uh, so Yeah. And, uh, but she got demoted, like heavily demoted. Yep. And AJ, the talking fish, took her place. And AJ's pretty fucking awesome. Um, yeah, and uh, now she she doesn't even work like under him. She works under one of the like awesome characters of season two that I believe was in season one, but we didn't really go into, and that was Herb. Yep. Also, um, we get three new time assassins who I just refer to as Huey, Dewey, and Louie because uh, that's what uh, the handler calls them. And, and they are, together. they are, uh, I believe their other nickname is the Swedish Triplets. Yeah, well, I just called them Huey, Dewey, and Louie, um, and I distinguish them by hairstyle, um, as I do with Huey, Dewey, and Louie, um, but, um, but, but yeah, the, the Swedish Triplets. Yeah, they're, they're, have... they're pretty badass, um. Yeah, and weird, very weird. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's go over um the situations of the seven. So we've got Luther, who essentially ends up working as a fixer slash muscle slash underground cage fighter for a mob boss from one of the most infamous mob bosses of the time, and uh, he's like drinking his. Wolves away and uh, just trying to make it by. Uh, you can see that that the Luther that we know is in there and he's trying, but he's just been beat down too much by life and thinks that he's alone in the world. Yep. So that's Luther's whole situation. Um, now we go to Diego, who... It's essentially, who's essentially gone like full Mark Spector. Uh, he's in an insane asylum. Um, he's out here yelling like a crazy person that the president's going to die. The president's going to die. They're well, going to assassinate the president. Because full on like keeping in tone with his season one Batman mentality. He's like, okay, I'm in the 60s. I'm, I'm in the early 60s. Oh, um, shit. I can stop JFK's assassination. It happened in the November 1963. Holy shit. Yep. And so he gets sent to a same asylum for it. Because, of course, this crazy man yelling about the president is going to be assassinated is going to be thrown in 
the fucking a padded cell. Um, yep, because uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but Diego decided to spill the truth about everything. And then and he ends up, you know, running into, like, I was like, wait, Crazy another, Jane, is that you? Another inmate. Yeah, who, like, legit reminded me of Crazy Jane without, like, the extra powers. Just cause off of just vibe. Who, uh, yes. She definitely has a bit of the Crazy Jane vibe to her. And all we really know about her is that she has mommy issues and yeah, yep. has uh, walked in on her parents dead. Yep. So, uh, basically that kind of messed with her and uh, yeah, she, so... she's crazy, but also she seems to pop up everywhere. And also, you know, Diego himself having mommy issues uh, kind of, he finds a kindred in her, and plus, his last girlfriend kind of got murdered. We skipped over that. Yeah, in but, season uh, one. Yeah, but yeah, his last mur- his last girlfriend kind of got murdered. So he's he he's out he's out here, kind of still kind of sad, kind of looking for love. So he finds it in an odd place, in a um, hopeless place, you could say. Oh my god, I was gonna make that joke, but I was like, maybe I shouldn't. But you did it anyway. Okay, cool. Um, that's why we're co-hosts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's Diego situation. We'll get deeper into that later. Um, mm-hmm. So let's quickly go over Klaus. Klaus, this man. Oh. He goes full on Alistair fucking Crowley. He makes a whole ass cult. Not just a cult, but do you remember what the name of the cult is? No, I do not. Actually, off the top of my head. Destiny's Children. That's right! Destiny's Children. And doesn't he, like, quote a bunch of song lyrics as part of his scriptures? Yeah, like, at one point later on, one of his followers finds him, and he's like, before you go, can you give me any last words of wisdom? He's like, don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick oh, to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. Oh my god. This is why I love Klaus, man. Um, but yeah, he he's pretty great. Um, you know, he's living the life. He's having he's having a blast. But um, also but also in the same get, vein yeah, though. Yeah, we is, get some uh, character development for Ben in uh, Klaus' story as well, because Ben's kinda like, hey man. I'm kind of tired of you just just watching you have fun. Uh, we, we figured also, out at the end of last season that I can possess you. So, uh, hey, can I take the driver's seat for a bit? Just a little bit? Well, also, what's dealing with this is uh, in true typical, like, um, person who gets power and realizes that it's not what they wanted, he, when we catch up with him, in 63 he's tired of the cult like leading the cult and yep. he wants to go on a personal mission involving a character from season one yeah uh, so klaus also has some like slight experience with time travel because he ended up getting sent to nam in the 70s at, at one point because he was fucking around with the time briefcase um and so he ends up finding the pre nom version of his boyfriend. Um, Dave. Yeah, Dave. And he ends up kind of like trying to convince Dave not to enlist and not to go to war, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he confronts Dave's uh, bigoted uncle. Well, um, bigoted slash closeted uncle. Yeah. Mm hmm. Who also went to the military. Talks about how good the military is. And and to give Klaus Klaus credit. His motivation is not so that he can be with Dave. It's It's just just so so that Dave doesn't have to. Dave doesn't have to needlessly die. For a war that didn't mean anything. Because that's literally what Vietnam was. It was just meaningless war. 
Well, anyway, uh, yeah, so, uh, that's Klaus's story. <laughs> dang, uh, dang, dang I, Brian, did that really throw you off that much? A little, but, uh, but anyway, uh, he, ironically, is in the same city as all the shit going down. Yep. Um... So now let's uh, let's jump around to Allison, who she has probably the most interesting story aside from Vanya. Um, oh yeah, and uh, sadly enough, the most currently relevant. Yeah, it's it's very sad. Um, so um, Allison actually becomes a civil rights organizer, um, and uh, she has a whole husband. But this time, he wasn't coerced. Yeah, like, actually, when we catch up with Allison, she can, surprisingly, talk. But yeah. she hasn't tested her powers yet. She doesn't know she still yeah, has her powers Yeah, because she's scared. Yeah, because she's scared. Yeah. Especially with, like, the PTSD of what happened last time. Um, and we also kind of find out later that... Uh, her powers can get a little addictive. Yep. And, um, you know, uh, this was really interesting. And, uh, again, like Brian said, it's very currently relevant. Um, because, you know, Allison being from modern times, uh, she, obviously, being a black woman, would have experienced racism on, you know, whatever level she well, had. Also, uh, but, well, also, uh, her, her time where, like, she arrived. Mm-hmm. In the 60s? Yeah, yeah it was smack dab was, in the middle of the civil rights movement. Well, it was also the scariest arrival. Because, uh... Because she runs into a couple racists who see, in their words, a pretty colored girl. Mm -hmm. And start chasing her for dear life. And that's when she runs into the hair salon. And the hair salon yep. ladies stand up for her. Yeah, and the and the and all you know some of the other you know gentlemen of the community kind of like just like you know they're saying your place go get the fuck out of here. Uh, and so, but, but yeah, so she had one of the most harrowing like reality yeah, and, checks, and and it's a really experienced. I mean, again, not on play modern racism, but. Racism in the sixties, boy, no one was gonna cancel them. So uh, it was a lot more rough out there for Allison. Um, uh, so it it was just it was a it was a very gripping story. Uh, like current events aside, it was a very gripping story. Um, and you you feel really bad because uh, once again, Allison's powers um, like kind of bite her in the ass and her husband is just like the fuck as you would be well and uh she honestly doesn't do it until um, yeah until he's about to be killed uh because, by the like, swedish guys uh, yep oh and also there's a whole incident with the police um well uh, yeah where uh he's yeah. about to be killed yeah, by, yeah, the police by, yeah, by the cops and then he goes um you know i that I believe something about like I heard a rumor that you walked away. Yeah, that you walked away, and so her husband gets the wrong impression because you know. Well, um, because so, she yeah, he, he, yeah she he whispers gets, it. Yeah, she, he he gets the wrong impression because he goes because he thinks, "Holy shit, there is no way a black woman can just talk to a white man and convince him to put his gun or gun down and walk away." What the fuck is up with you? Are you are you a plant? Are you an inside person? You are light skinned. I I don't know. I don't know what your deal is. Um, because I mean, because you would you would definitely think that, especially because Allison is light skinned. And I, not that I, like I didn't even really think about that. Like actually, until I like I started saying it. But like, that's actually pretty genius that they they got that they that they went with this plot line. And Allison is a light skinned actress because, you know. Since she's light skinned, the, they a lot of people could assume like a lot of people at in that time of the sixties could assume that she's like half white, right? And so like her talking to that 
talking to that white cop and making him walk away. He's like, wait, are you working with the white people? And th- that was what he Are you doing. FBI, CIA? What are you? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, like, um, Allison is just like, all right, you know what? You know what? Fuck it. She ends up explaining the whole thing. Obviously, it's a lot to process. And he's just, mm-hmm. and then, Which and I so, love it, though, because uh, she decides to do it after having a night where she gets drunk with with Klaus and Vanya. Yep. Which is and pretty fun. Be, because, yeah. Which is pretty fun because we get to actually see Vanya have fun with her siblings because she really, I mean, she knows bits and pieces, obviously, because she's been able to talk to each of them at certain points. But, like, she doesn't hold a grudge for real because she starts to understand the full context now. So she's like, all right. Um, but anyway, so now let's move on to Vanya. Holy shit, Vanya's story was phenomenal. Um, uh, the... Yeah, because uh, there they introduce you to the situation with her, and you start to think, is there more to this situation? No, I, I knew almost instantly. I was like, oh, she gay. <laughs> she's. I already, I already knew. I was like, oh. Well, I didn't. I, know Ellen Page, and I didn't want to assume. But I, I didn't. No, I'm not. I'm not Ellen Page. I was talking about uh, Sissy. Um, yeah. The two of them. Yeah. But I was saying, as soon as I saw Sissy, I was like, oh, she's gay as fuck, and I'm here for it. Which is very interesting, because remember, we're still in the '60s. Yep. And so and... It, it's kind of this classic story of I I got to stay with my I got to stay with my husband because, you know, we we can't really do anything about it even if I do care about you. I have these feelings. Like there's no way we could do anything about that. And also I have my son who who like is clearly on the spectrum. Um they um he keep like the husband keeps talking about like institutionalizing him or something because that's kind of what you did to your autistic children back in those days unfortunately um, yeah because and, a lot of, uh, because a lot of par- a lot of parents weren't like you know trained on how to handle those kids or you know knowing what to expect and uh, they don't come out and say it but they imply that maybe he's a little bit abusive yep uh, and also, uh, he goes on about how he's got this big deal at work, but he needs to go back to work. And then they get a call, and uh, he didn't go back to work. He went to a bar. Yep. He ends up, uh, eventually it gets to the point, ends up, um, like, um, after Sissy and Vanya have like a heated debate on what they what they want to do, uh, Harlan the son ends up running away, and he ends up almost drowning in this lake. Uh, Vanya ends up using her powers to straight up like Moses part the waters and save him, and um, unknowingly she ends up transferring a bit of her power into Harlan. Hmm. Um, and so, like, that that kind of turns Harlan into a keystone, which kind of, we later see, is part of what triggers the uh, apocalyptic events. And, uh... Well, no. So, yeah. No, that, lot... that was not the apocalypse. Uh, they confirmed what the apocalypse was. Oh, yeah, what was it? It was just pure Vanya. Because, oh, uh, it was just straight up Vanya? Because of what happens is uh, they get to the point where where they uh, Sissy actually agrees to run away with Vanya, but she leaves a note. And so the husband sends his sheriff brother after them. And, uh, of course, Vanya initially tries to attack them. With her powers, but gets knocked out, and so the FBI get involved, and they're like, "Hey, you've got this strange oh, yeah. stuff going and, on." Yeah, and, and, and then they end up. Vanya. They end up 
<laughs> yeah, they end up thinking she's a Russian sleeper agent. Yeah, because of her name. And then they do some fuck shit with her mind, and like they well, what the, MK what... they, they MK Ultra her basically, right? Yeah, they give her LSD and shock treatment. Yeah, they MK Ultra her, um, which uh, shock treatment for someone that can uh, manipulate sound waves is not a great thing. And so while mentally she starts also re- psychedelics on a psychic is never a good idea. Yeah. Just yeah. So, uh, basically, in this timeline, because we said full spoilers, what causes the apocalypse in this version of events is that she uses her powers to the fullest extent, where it goes off like a bomb. It saves Kennedy's life, but Kennedy thinks that it's the Russians. Yep, and, and it so triggers it triggers a nuclear war. Mm-hmm. That destroys everything, and uh, that's what happens. Yeah. So um, instead, um, Vanya ends up convincing Sissy not to leave, and they need to just. Well, no, she she does, but oh, they feels... they go after her siblings save her and stop her, especially Ben. Uh, she gets she still has that connection. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah, Ben. Yeah. Oh, that that's her. That scene specifically, that was, dude, that was so fucking heart, heart wrenching. Yes, um, it was. Because, because Ben, he can kind of, because Vanya's in this weird kind of like almost astral plane, uh, Ben can actually like reach her and communicate with her. So like while she's in this like hazy drug state, he ends up reaching out to her to try and break her out. And is like, look, Vanya, you need to snap out of it. Listen to me. You this is what's going down. They need you. We need you. Come on, Vanya. And he he has this talk where he basically says, you are special. You're one of us. We need you. And and to make things more uh he pushes himself to the limit. Yep. And uh, basically it's also kind of a fitting thing because I been stuck around is because unfinished business. He wanted to make sure his family was good. And also part of it is that he was also scared of what was on the other side. Um, he openly admits that later. Um, Which, uh, at least that Klaus, was his... Klaus, Klaus brings that, that up. Um, that was his last words to Klaus. Was, uh, it was not your fault for me missing my chance for the Golden Gates. It, I was scared. Mm-hmm. It was not your fault. Yep. And those and were his so, words that he told Vanya to tell Klaus. Yep. And uh, it's, it's, it was a super sweet moment because... Especially when when he said... Um, can you I hold, my, can you, can you can, hold me before I, know this I go? Gonna be, I know this is going to be a weird request, but can you do one last thing can, for yeah, me? Can you, yeah, can you hold me b- hold while me? I go? Yeah. Hold me just, while I go? Dude, let me tell you. Okay, so... Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be 100 transparent with y'all. So I was watch I was watching this at a time where I I had literally had to go to back to back funerals uh, that particular week, and that scene hit me like a fucking truck. Reasonable, oh, from what oh I know. I my own. god, that scene hit me like a fuck. I had I had to like I had to pause it. Walk away, <laughs> come back. Um, but yeah, be absolutely beautiful scene. The the just yeah. the acting between Ellen and Ben's actor was just so good. Um, yes, yes, it was. And and uh, back to what we were saying though about the plot, because we don't want to go for too long. Yeah. Um, it's after they do that that um. They save the day, but everyone thinks that Vanya and the whole family are part of the assassination. Mm-hmm. And, except for Five, who they just think is a random kid that they kidnapped. Yep. But but yeah, so then she gets the she gets a mental link of Harlan reaching out for help. And so she's like, I need to go now. And she's like, for the first time in my life, 
I'm asking you guys for help because I don't want to do this by myself. And initially they say no, but then they have a like one by one scene where they all come to help. And of course, first is my guy, Klaus. Klaus yep. is like, so you really said goodbye to Ben. Ben's gone forever, eh? No way I'm letting you do this on your own. And then Allison and Diego come, and then Five comes. <laughs> and then Luther gets in the back. Yep. And he's like, no fat jokes. Or I'm I, out. I thought, I thought that was hilarious. Um, and then they, yeah. they go they go to rescue Harland, and then other fuck shit happens while they're yep. trying to rescue Harland. Yep, and the like the, the remaining Swedish guy comes back. Deus ex Swedish guy. Uh, and then yeah, a bunch of crazy shit happens. Uh so let's quickly jump to five. Um so five he essentially has to um assassinate the time board um in order to um do a favor well, for the handler. The handler who's going off book right now because she's pissed that they demoted her. Mm -hmm. Uh, she goes to five and is like, "Hey, you get rid of you get rid of the whole board for me, and I will not only get you and your siblings back to 2019. I will then take you." To where the apocalypse is not happening anymore. Either of them. And he's yep. like, shit, I don't want to do this. And so he tries other mo other methods. And then finally he's like, alright, fine. And, and so also, like, this season uh, also helps Five kind of close the loop. Um, for, his, uh, for his whole journey, time travel wise. Because uh, one of the last things that we know that Five did in season one, um, as a time assassin, we find out he was the one on the grassy knoll. Which, you know... Well, um, we've... I believe what we had confirmed was a theory from season one. And it wasn't that uh, he was trying to kill Kennedy. I believe he was trying to kill... Lee Harvey. Oh, he was trying to, to kill Oswald? Really? Yeah, Interesting. Yeah, to obstruct the the timeline to gotcha. where Kennedy would live. Gotcha. He was because, to kill um, because as we know, Five, as it closed the loop, did not succeed, but Kennedy still died, so... Yep. So, um... And that, and that leads into one of the coolest fights ever, where Five himself and they both simultaneously punch Luther in the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, it's actually funny though because um, they're both suffering from from par time paradox psychosis. Yep. To where they're both a little unhinged. But they're also fighting, which, um, I said this before, but one of the cool things about Season 2 is they took, like, smaller characters that we saw in the background and, like, gave them a lot more things to do, like Herb, but also Older Five. Yep, I thought Older Five was pretty cool. And, and uh, he by looks the end... and acts just like... The young yeah. five that we know. Yeah, but his body actually matches his personality. Um, mm -hmm. So that was cool. And to kind of end the loop, um, the, what happens is the portal opens up from season one. And it's, it's the moment where he comes through. And, you know, young five tells him, he goes, you didn't move the decimal point. And it's like, oh, it was one point. It was actually point seven zero six. Son of a bitch. I knew something and, didn't look right. And so he's like, well, you gotta go. And he pushes him through. Well, uh, Luther, Luther, he's gonna change 
he's gonna change it and tries to like get to the point where he's going to change it, but before he can, yeah, uh, Luther eats he, the briefcase, right? Yeah, he gets this. The psychosis comes over him, and uh, him and Five are gonna like fight again, and so Luther comes in and just. Chucks the dude through yeah, the time yeah, portal. Say, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, he just yeets him through the portal. Um, and also he tries to swipe the briefcase, uh, which honestly for Luther was a smart move, but also well, Luther was a dumbass. Well, uh, because... Luther didn't think that's I hate no, it. That's what, I, I like Luther, no, but no, Luther, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. Luther was, Luther that was didn't a smart think move. about the briefcase, and so yeah. when he yeeted him, the portal closed on the briefcase, so yeah. That's what I'm saying. It was a smart move for him to try to take the briefcase, but he was also not thinking about the placement of the briefcase. He was like, aha, I got... Oh, shit. And he's like, hey, Christ is averted! And it's like, the briefcase, you dumbass. Yeah, but... <laughs> That's li- and it was funny, because, you know, me and my me and my little cousin, um, uh, because uh, uh, I actually got him into Umbrella Academy, and I'm like, he watched the first season. We were watching it together, and we literally both yelled at the TV, like, "God damn it, Luther!" Oh, uh, that was a good time. But yeah, so that that's basically what Phi was doing. And also, he had to reorganize everybody, so that was cool. Um, and also, um, he helped the family where they were having their personal issues. But then and... also the time. Mm-hmm. Agency came back like when they were helping Vanya, and all shit and, broke loose. And and also like I want I'm gonna quickly touch on this too, um, because like they they like in all throughout season one, um, it all it was always stated throughout that like Five and Vanya were super close, like Five was the closest to Vanya so much so that every day since Five disappeared, she left Five's favorite sandwich in his room just in case he would teleport back. Um, Mm -hmm. and so, like, it was really cool to finally see Five and Vanya fully interact. It was really, really nice. Well, because in season one, they, they did, too. I mean, yeah, but, but... yeah, but, like, they actually got, like, multiple scenes together. Like, with just them, too. Or, like, just them and, like, Luther, or them and one other person. Like, it wasn't just the full seven. Yeah, but anyway, uh, because we're... We're reaching on uh, like twenty three minutes left. Yep. Uh, uh, but yeah, so uh, I feel like uh, I know we haven't gotten through everyone, but yeah, almost everyone. I'm... But uh, I feel like there's someone that we need to address. Okay. Here, and that's the new character for season two. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Um, yeah. The one that we've briefly mentioned before, but yeah. who actually has a surprisingly bigger role. Yeah, Klaus is crazy girl. Yeah, Klaus, Klaus is, I'm not Klaus is crazy girl. Uh, Diego's crazy girl. Uh, I, yeah. I just can't remember her name off the top of my head. Uh, so yeah, so turns out um, that her family was murdered by the time agency, and um, she ended up being adopted by the handler. Um, and Basically, instead of, um, um, she ends up being trained Black Widow style, um, and becomes mm-hmm. a time assassin, um, and in order to keep, um, her weapon from, ki- uh, the weapon she created from killing her, um, Handler kind of flipped the script and, uh, pinned it on Five, which well, Five actually isn't... No, 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 yeah, which is technically isn't wrong. But she rewrote but... she rewrote the file so that it would say that it was AJ who gave the kill order, not her. Yeah, I was gonna say technically it isn't wrong because Five did kill her parents, but he didn't he was just doing his job. The one who gave the order to kill her parents was her. Which uh we later find out was completely on purpose because the parents were never the goal. Yep, the goal was her. Because we find out, dun dun dun, she also has powers. And 
was born on the same day as everyone else. Yeah, which is why I said earlier that we know of when I was talking about, like, you know, kids with powers and shit. And that's also why I said they doubled down on the Allison Luther thing, because they, at one point, make a plea to her that we're your family now, but that includes Diego, who they've confirmed they both love each other. Right? It's weird. It's so super weird. Um, but, but yeah. So, uh, she has powers, but she doesn't just have powers. She has. She kind of has like a like a copy, almost like a copycat or a mimic type of deal, where she can copycat. take all the powers. Yeah. Yeah, she can like but, mimic all the powers. But she can only do one at a time. Yeah, but it's still pretty broken. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you, especially when you stack that with her like time assassin training, it's stupid broken. Um, yeah, it it is because uh, they do a whole thing where like fifty plus time agents come because the handlers like send everyone, so it's like a yeah, hundred she, plus. She she legit. Uh, so for any other any like mainstream comic fans out there. She goes full on like fucking Amazo super adaptoid on those fuckers. Like it's mm-hmm. nuts. Because because initially the handler just gives sends out like a hundred plus time agents and is like kill them. And when that doesn't work, thanks to Vanya, we then get the revelation about her and uh she goes ham on all of them. Yeah, oh. <laughs> because she because she uses the cheat code and she takes Vanya's powers and is just like, "Fuck all of you, AOE noble phantasm." And then that fuck shit with Allison. Where, yeah, uh, her and Allison go hand to hand, time agency training versus Hargrave training, where it's pretty good, like back and forth fighting until. Allison decides to use her powers and she says, I heard a rumor and then the other chick says that you stop breathing. Yep. And then it's just, oof. And oh man, that was, it was so good. It was so good. That was... But then we get like a little bit of the, the fuckery because in order to help her start breathing again, Luther had to... Yeah, mouth to mouth, yep. Mouth to mouth, which I... This is part of the thing that I like about Luther, because when it initially happens, Luther's like, I'm sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> and he's, like, apologizing for it. Yeah, look, L- L- Luther, Luther is a sad puppy, but, like, also, <laughs> he's kind of a dumbass. <laughs> like, he's probably my least favorite, just because I've never liked the Cyclops character um which is funny though because at least for season one i thought i was the most like luther for season one mm-hmm. but uh I, see i don't know who i can relate to the most maybe klaus I, I, I do i do have klaus moments um i don't know i don't know but anyways i'd also I say got, five somewhat yeah definitely i i definitely got some of five but yeah so all that crazy fuck shit happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, uh, and, uh, here's where we get to, like, one of the, like, actual kind of cliche moments of season two. Yep. It's the fact where they've been setting up this whole entire time about five time traveling, and mm-hmm. they even have a moment where he speaks to his father. Yeah, because, like, because Reggie Reggie's still alive at this point because it's the sixties, and apparently somewhat involved in the Kennedy assassination, but he didn't want it, him to be also, dead. Also, human mom is there, so this kind of confirms like the theory that a lot of people had with the show, um, which I think it was also confirmed in the comics that like this is just kind of, she um. Reggie pulls kind of a vision with her where, like, he didn't really, like, love her. And and so when she eventually died, because, you know, I, 
is it reve- is is what Reggie is revealed in season two? I don't fully remember because he takes um, off. His... He takes off. We yeah, he get takes to off see his... it fully. Okay. Yeah. So he does he... take off his face. Okay. He takes off his face when the other of the magi- majestic twelve say that, uh, yeah, you want to leave us because we went a little too far and killed Kennedy. Well, um, you're not going to leave us, and you're going to still give us all of your technology and money, because if you don't, we'll tell the world who you really are. And he's like, bitch, yep. bet. And takes and off then, his yeah. face, takes and, off he mur- and he murders face, them all. Which we don't get to see what he looks like, except for the yeah. back side. So, but yeah, so now, now the cat's out of the bag, or aliens out of the suit, we know uh-huh. that he's an alien. Um, yeah. Which I mean, it, that was it was heavily hinted in the first season, so I don't feel like that was a big secret. Um, I mean, they showed him on an alien planet in the first season. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, I mean, we know he's an alien. Uh, so that fully confirmed. But yeah, basically, we find out with, that um, Mom was human, and he kind of just pulled a vision and kind of just replicated her brain patterns and put her consciousness into a robot body. Um, well, it seems like he did care for her. The human. Yeah, that's what I'm person. saying. That's what I'm saying. He really did love her. Like so, it's not, so we see that Reggie isn't as cold as we thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, we got to see Baby Pogo, which is adorable, or at least Pogo two or three, because <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk. R.I.P. Pogo one. Um, yeah, which um, we find out that at least in this universe, Pogo is the ape. Is the monkey that they sent to space? Yep. Um, and okay, uh, similar, so... similar to Luther, they only gave him the serum to save him. Yep. yep. And also, we find out that Pogo is actually like the real number one or the number zero. Yep. All... Because okay, he so... was initially like their child. So to kind of cut through to everything, because we're getting close to time. Uh... Mm-hmm. The the season ends with a, them coming back, and they're back at, like, the mansion. And it's just like, oh, shit, we're back. And it's just but like, oh, shit. And it's, things but Reggie's are a little there. different. Yeah, because Reggie's here. And it's just like, wait, what the fuck? Dad, how are you still alive? And, he just, and then it's like, who the fuck are you? And, and no, he's, he says, I knew you'd come back someday. Mm-hmm. So he knew that they were coming. Yeah, but yeah, but, but so this is so this is the Reggie from the previous timeline. Um not the Reggie from our timeline. I guess. Yeah. But yeah. then he also said so uh, th- then they're like, This is the Umbrella Academy building and he's like, Incorrect. This is the Sparrow Academy. And, and then we, we see a bunch of people and one of them Six. Is we we ben. see w- we see six figures off in the distance, shadowed, probably not casted yet. Uh, and then we see Ben come Alive. with his old with his old school haircut, still in a uniform, but as an adult, saying, mm-hmm. "Dad, who the fuck are these people?" Yep. So Ben and, is here. It's crazy. And just to yep, but also just to go to show. The the tone of the show and part of the reason why I love this show, the show then ends with all the six that we know and love just simultaneously saying shit. Uh, yeah, it's just, ah oh, shit. Yeah, so the X-Men have officially met their Hellfire Club, and it's going to be pretty intense. Uh, and, like, Ben is in the middle of it. It's all, And it's already been renewed for a third season, so we don't have to panic and be like, is it going to get renewed? I just wonder if they're going to get anyone familiar for uh, for the Sparrow. So yeah, and, uh, r- and real in... quick, uh, we can't really do speculation, uh, but uh, real quick, I guess there's a transition into final thoughts. Um, well, I was just going to say really quickly, you know what would be really funny well, is if what? one of those people was Antonio Thomas. I would love Antonio Thomas. Are you kidding me? She she would be a perfect parallel, Allison, because they also kind of like they could look like they could be related. 
to be honest. Oh my god, yes. Give me more of that. Yeah, no. Misfit reunion. Get Curtis up in here too. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So if they wanted to get Ramsey, I would not be upset. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, Umbrella Academy season two is great. Uh, definitely watch the show. It's completely different from the comics. The comics are a lot more wild and crazy. Uh, but honestly, I I love this adaptation. It it works perfectly for TV. I feel like it's not super trippy and like too out of the box. Um, it has its weird moments, but it doesn't get too weird. Yeah, and uh, so, it's really good. It has really good music, action, comedy. Mm-hmm. Acting, and, all that and, and the family dynamic is really nice too uh but yeah so now we've officially reached that time of the night where we get to tell you guys what is coming up on our channels it is plug time so brian what is coming up for you my friend well in me typical fashion i am still like messing up but the plan is to at least review why no to herb i missed last week due to some life stuff and i'm not feeling feeling kind of under the weather and honestly forgetting about it and uh a lot of different stuff so i'm gonna just stick with that um gonna try to do that again this week like actually do it and uh owl house even though i love it i'm so far behind that i'm probably just gonna do a season review at the end well i mean there there are only, there are only three more episodes left so yeah so i'm um, I'm just going to do a season review at the end, and knowing us, unless something big gets in the way, we probably will be doing a season review here. Oh, you bet but, your ass we are. Um, but we got a pretty stacked schedule coming up. But Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, Brian, real quick, while, while, I'm gonna, while I'm saying what I'm doing, uh, can you pull up the schedule so I can tell them what's coming up next? You um, wrote down the schedule. I didn't. Oh, you! Oh, you did not also do a backup schedule. Okay, let me pull up the schedule then. Okay, so what what I'm doing? Uh, I am going. I'll be uploading the Owl House review I did tonight. Uh, I don't know if it's up yet or if it's uh, currently in the process of being up on my Blair. Uh, but there's that. Um, I'm gonna. Do, I, I have an anime news piece that I'm gonna do over on my YouTube channel, Mr. Uh, Jay's Caldea, uh, because uh, one of the biggest anime pirate sites is uh, finally gone. R.I.P. Kiss Anime. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, also got, I stream on Twitch uh, pretty much Monday through Friday doing FGO content. So definitely if you want to just chill, watch me play video games and talk, um, there's that. Uh, follow me up there. Links are all in the description. Uh, excuse me. Oh, here it is. Okay. So next week we are going to be doing for Channel Chasers, Star Girl Season 1. Uh, that is honestly one of my favorite superhero shows. Uh, that I've had in a, uh, watched in a long time, and honestly, it's right up there with The Flash with one of the best first seasons of a superhero TV show. So, yeah. Big, big, big shoes to fill, but damn, it's great. Uh, so, look forward to that, uh, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. But until then, uh, we'll catch you guys next week when we talk about Stargirl. Peace. <laughs>